After a summer of near-perfect domination, Honda's Jet Lawrence finally found adversity last week at Round 9. Enter Kawasaki's Joe Shimoda as he raced to his second win of the season. Only three rounds remain in the battle for the 250 title. Moto 1 from Bud's Creek, Maryland is next. It's round 10 of the Lucas Oil Pro Moto Cross Championship, sanctioned by AMA Pro Racing, an hour south of Washington, D.C. for the Geico Motorcycle, Bud's Creek National. And what a show we have in store today. We've been celebrating the legends of motocross all year long. James Stewart is second on the all-time combined wins list in motocross and supercross, but his legacy goes far beyond the numbers. One of the most legendary riders to ever throw a leg over a motorcycle, and we're glad to have him with us today. You see the numbers behind an absolutely legendary career against second all-time in combined wins in this sport, but it's really about more than that. We can hear it with the crowd behind us, the electricity, the excitement. We've got James Stewart back at the races, and you love this track, so it's got to be great for you to be back. Man, it's such a great feeling to be back. Like, as soon as I walked in, people have been cheering like this, and <laughs> I feel like I'm on the starting gate again. I'm feeling like these boys are about to be right here, so um, I'm glad to be back. The history and, and being on the old starting gate where all that went down is um, pretty special. Yeah, that's actually where we're standing. Um, real quick, let's talk 250 class and what you've seen so far this year. Yeah, I think Jet Lawrence has been in control even when he wasn't in control last weekend. I felt like there's been a little bit difference with him today. He's been a little bit more focused and overall I think those boys might have woke up the sleeping giant again and um, Jet, Jet should be back to where he has. All right. James, you love this track at Bud's Creek. Give us the MX versus ATV Legends track map. What's it all about here? Well, this is one of my favorite tracks. I always look forward to coming to Bud's Creek. I think it's really important for these guys to get a good start. I mean, maybe everybody else except for Jet. But the dirt's great here. I mean, look at this crowd. It's beautiful. It's, it is humid today. So I think it's going to be, um, you know, conditioning is going to play a part of it. But it's, it's the um, home run. But home stretch. Yeah. So we should be able to get it done. And, um, you know, look at that pretty number one play. I'm excited. That's what he's trying to hold on to after his first really off race of the year. Jet Lawrence answers back fastest in qualifying today. He'll lead the field to the gate after they do their final sight lap. Moto One from Bud's Creek coming your way live on MAV TV. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Lucas Oil. Keep that engine alive. General Tire. For whatever you do, General Tire delivers. And by Honda. Celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. Got the GoPro camera here at Bud's Creek. Pierce Brown going to give you a tour from practice. Let's see where these ruts form up early in the day when this track is soft. And it's going to form those lines we'll have in the first photo that's coming your way here. Nice to have the GoPro shot from the front of Pierce Brown's bike. Let's introduce the third member of our broadcast team, Jason Thomas, is trackside. Last week in the Unadilla, Jet Lawrence had one of the most tumultuous weekends of his career. Now, and I hope to avoid a lot of that drama, he has gone to the very inside gate here, hoping to get that elusive hole shot. Now, it's a high risk, high reward play because he can get pinched up against these banners. But if you look, there's a little hard pack stretch right outside of his gate that he's going to try to utilize and stay out of that deep stuff in the middle. Yeah. I th I think with Jason, um, I, I agree with you. I, I think Jet's trying to, one, you know, there's nobody on the outside of him, so he's kind of eliminate half the field. He doesn't have to worry about both of them squeezing him off on both sides. But I think it's, it shows a lot. You know, I think he's trying to get out a good start, and you can get up on the hard pack, so it would be interesting. But he has to get the jump. Like, otherwise, it's pretty much a waste of a pick. Yeah, we'll see how he does it. And uh, we'll get some more advice here from James Stewart. KTM Keys to the Moto. What do they need to do today? Well, here, you got to get a good start. I mean, I kind of emphasize in practice how important it is with this start. Jet went to the inside, but normally you have, you know, top 10 guys. It's important to get a good lap in practice. And line selection, you know, these guys are going to have to pick their way around the racetrack. There's going to be a lot of lines forming. And the main out of all of them, try not to get stewed. Oh! Try not to get stewed. Okay. Last weekend, Jet, I believe he got stewed because of uh, what was happening with Mr. 411. And, um, you know, his race kind of fell apart. So all these guys, they just need to stay focused and uh, not be too stewed and enjoy the day. Okay, keep your cool, guys. Let's try not to get stewed. Uh, we just announced before opening ceremonies today, Team USA is now official for the Motocross of Nations coming up at the end of September at Redbud. Eli Tomek and Chase Sexton, no one's surprised. They'll ride 450s for the team. 
Justin Cooper getting the 250 pick. Here's the AMA's Mike Pelletier with how important it is to win this year's event. It's everything to us, you know, for the AMA, uh, not just for the AMA, but the three riders too really want to win. Uh, it helps being home in front of our hometown crowd. That energy level is going to be huge. So to be able to put it on top of the box is everything for us and get that Chamberlain trophy. Yeah, it has been a couple of years since we've, we won that thing. And I think with the pandemic and these guys, there's a lot of pride with this whole motocross the nation. So Justin, you got him picked, you got to represent. I know there was a lot of controversy, but you are the right pick and we got our team to go. So I've been able to do it and we'll, I think we'll be able to get it done this year too. Yeah, that was a late surge in this series. I don't think Cooper was considered in consideration just a few weeks ago. So here we go. Lawrence was the fastest rider in qualifying, so he is your Monster Energy Fast Qualifier Award winner. That's why he gets to pick whatever gate he wants, and he chose the inside. We'll see how this turns out. In motocross, that's often not where they choose to go. Fly Racing 32nd card is up, James. It is about to happen. It's about to happen. The nerves are gone now. They started the motorcycles up. I think you can see as Jet's trying to hype himself up. Everybody right now, like, they're just waiting for this thing, for that, that guy to point to the girl, and, and you start going. So that's what I learned from you. They actually get calmer that moments before. Oh, yeah, it's calm before the storm. That is really true. Okay, well, here we go, everybody. 30 minutes plus two laps. 250 Moto 1 from Bud's Creek. Lawrence, not the yeah. jump, but he's able to edge through a couple of riders. Yeah. Now he gets swallowed up. It's one of the rock star Husqvarna's with the whole shot. Yeah, it was a good start from Jet, actually. He, the jump wasn't there, but luckily for him, the guy got caught in the gate. But overall, he's top 10, so he'll be fine. Hampshire is the rider in the lead, and welcome back to racing. Michael Moseman missed some action back today, and he's looking to go to the front. I'm, I'm looking forward to Michael. He actually came out in practice and looked pretty strong, and you can already tell he's trying to get around RJ. It's important to get out front. Clean air here at this track. You can kind of separate yourself, and you can, Michael's feeling it. Yeah, he wants to make the move right now. Nate Thrasher in third. I've not seen too many good starts. Oh, was that Swole, who might have gotten tagged and went down? He's in about fifth place as we watch this battle for the lead. Yes, it was Swole at 31, oh, and Justin Cooper uh, with him. Man, that's tough. That's what happens when you get a bad start on there or, or get caught up. Mosman's already made the pass on Michael, uh, yeah. on RJ, so he's going for it today. He's been like that since practice, so that's good to see him. And it's a pretty good start for an RJ. I don't think I've seen him up front that Look, much in the beginning. That's true. He's had a couple of moto podiums, but they have been coming from the back to get it done. Thrasher, again, is in third. So Swole is fourth or fifth. He had a problem, takes Cooper with him, and that's going to be a big problem now for Cooper wants to get one of these wins before the year is up as Moseman leads. I think we've got the replay of the crash. Yeah, it looks like, um, yeah, he just got cut off. Jalik was trying to cut him off. Um, you know, Justin was trying to squeeze up on the inside, maybe a little aggressive. I think, um, you know, Jalik's out here fighting and I think Justin has the speed. So maybe a little aggressive, but he gets caught out. Both of them do. Wow, so just like Unadilla last week, Cooper actually led that one early, and then a crash on lap two sent him back. This one even worse. But how about Michael Mosman? JS, he's on the move right now. Yeah, some guys are really good in the, in the beginning part of the race, and I think Michael being off a little bit, and he looks around, having RJ, RJ's usually stronger at the end of the part of the race, so it's a good chance for him to be able to stretch that lead out. And again, it's clean air, it's clean air. Jet's not on you, so. Make hay while the sun shines. Now it's pretty humid today. We'll see what the fitness is for Moseman after missing the race at Unadilla. He was taking some hard hits, crashed at uh, Millville in the sand whoops early in the day. Is he 100%? We're going to find out because he's got some laps led here at Bud's Creek. Yeah, you can see they put a little bit of water down. So these guys, even though they're charging, they're being a little careful, especially that section before the uh, finish line. They got to be a little bit careful. So. Overall, the track prep looks great. It looks fun, and like you said, it's going to be really its about conditioning today. So otherwise, Michael's looking good right now. Yeah, speed not an issue for Mosman. That corner was an issue. Yeah, yeah. it looks like they put a lot of water down, and he made a mistake, but nonetheless, well, yeah. there you go. Thrasher, third place. Down, I have not seen Thrasher get good starts all year. He finally gets one. Now he cannot get the bike to fire, so he's going to lose a ton of ground. It's been a rough start for the Yamaha boys. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thrasher and Cooper going down early. That'll move Jet Lawrence up to third. He was fourth. I think that puts a lot of pressure. I think, again, with Jet being who he is, it puts a lot of pressure on these guys to try to make make the magic while you're on there. And having this track and being slippery, the younger kids, sometimes they go for it. They get a little excited and they get out there and they, you know, doing donuts out here. But, <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunate for Justin and, and Nate, but they're going to have to fight through it and, and don't give up. 
Beta Motorcycles drone cam showing you a view we've never seen before of Bud's Creek. The drone is new to our show this year at all the tracks. Mosman has got a second on Hampshire. We have not found Hunter Lawrence. We are trying to spot him. He is way back. I have him there he 30th right now on the 96 in Teal. Wow. Yeah, every every race, I mean, when he has an opportunity to capitalize on Jet, I think all these guys, even with Justin, with Jet having a rough weekend, it would have been important for those guys to get out here to first moto, but, you know, they, they make mistakes, and we're not sure what happened with Hunter, but hopefully he gets up there and, and salvages what he can. And Shimoda is ninth right now, so oh, we hear was a crash on the first lap, actually, for Hunter, so that's why he's in that number 30 position right now. A long way to go. He's going to eat a lot of roots coming through. And what you'll realize on this track, for the people at home, this track's hard to pass on. So when, when you really throw it down on the beginning part of the race, and like what Hunter and, and, and uh, Justin have, it makes for some tracks you can come up to the back of the pack. Well, this track is going to be tough. So hey, you just feel bad for them, but you got to fight for every position, and you'll see these guys probably moving some people out the way here pretty quickly. And Pierce Brown has gone down, so all sorts of carnage. We saw a couple riders tangled. And then more problems here. Track's just slippery. These guys are racing, and who knows? He could have got knocked down or whatnot, but, man, we've had some drama in the yeah, beginning yeah. part of the race. It's hard to keep up with this. Well, you look at this dirt. They, they, they've been coining it as chocolate cake here at Bud's Creek. It looks like it has so much traction, but you keep talking about the watering. Is it deceptive it's right now? It's very, and especially in the beginning part, even though this chocolate cake, I mean, it's more like a mousse. It's his chocolate, <laughs> but it's a little slippery on there. And, okay. And it's easy to override the track, and, and it's, these guys are getting aggressive. You can get roosted. And a lot of this stuff is when it's kind of funneling in one line. You get into the corner, and then all of a sudden it's wet. You don't see it coming in before compared to being spread out. So I think a lot of that's getting caught out from these guys in the beginning part of the race being so close to each other, not being able to pay attention to it. But, you know, look at the gap. I mean, you got the top three, and then it's 12 seconds to wow. fourth place. Yeah, that's Voland in fourth, but way back. That is Brown, I believe, in the mechanics area now. Hampshire has closed a little bit back on Moseman. So, Brown, I hope he's all right to see the jerseys torn up after that crash we showed you. And now you see Jet starting to inch up on the lead duo. Yeah, I think what Jet's going to do is let this race settle down. You know, he's probably taken a look around him, realized Justin was down, and realized his brother's in the back. I'm sure he has a good feeling. Joe Shimoda's behind him. So, he's probably going to let these guys come to him, knowing that Michael's just getting back. He might not be the strongest on there. And then you got RJ. It's always been pretty strong, but, you know, been a little inconsistent. So Jet's actually in a great position, and what you're probably going to see is let him let this thing come to him. Volan, I mentioned in fourth, and shout-out to Goim Ferez, the Spanish rider, just picked up as a replacement injury fill-in for Nate, uh, not Nate Thresher, sorry, Romano, who was so fast last week and then got hurt during the week. Battle for the lead. Hampshire trying to get back around Moseman. Looking for an opening. Yeah, things are starting to happen a little quick for Michael right now. So just got to calm down. He's got a good gap between fourth place. So even if Jet gets by him, he's in a good position. I think if he can just calm down, RJ is going to make his way by him. If he wants to get by him, RJ is aggressive. And actually, both of them are aggressive. So it should be interesting to see what happens. But RJ's look like he's starting to find the flow. Look like the track is starting to come to him. And you got Michael looking back. So let's see what he does right here. He's setting him up on the inside. Some contact. So I'll make contact with Jet Lawrence last week as he was battling through. That's that aggression that you're talking about. Thor Battlebox will show us a couple other things. That is Cooper and Hunter Lawrence trying to come through. Yeah, it's going to be tough for those guys. Again, it funnels back down if what you're seeing with RJ and uh, you know Michael. You get to a certain part of the track and on these off cameras, what you can't tell on TV is how off camera this track is. So everything kind of funnels back into one line. So. RJ's got to be patient and make his pass because you just saw he lost some time right here and now he has Jet on him, so we'll see what happens. Hunter Lawrence getting around Phelps, so the rider from South Africa, he's in 18th, battling out with Sanford, and I think it's Chase Yenser on the yellow Suzuki, and now Jet Lawrence has quickly bridged the gap, and he's right to the rear tire of Hampshire. Yeah, I don't know how much of that is Jet picking up the pace, or RJ made those mistakes and Jet okay. caught up to him, but I think Jet 
once he catches these guys, you're going to see him get around them pretty quickly because you don't want to get that chocolate cake on that, that face. <laughs> it's going to get stuck. So if Jet can make the pass, he'll get on them. Otherwise, you're going to see him drop back because the roost does stick to you, and he'll just let these guys um, work with each other and then attack him once he gets close again. Be like the uh, first birthday party, the smash cake, it's getting smash. the cake to the face. Yeah, that's what it's like. So we'll see if RJ can catch back up to Michael and see what happens. All right, three riders have completely broken away from Volan, Ferris, and by the way, that's Monster Energy Yamaha Star Racing that he's riding for. Shimoda sixth, Varese seventh. Stepic, a local privateer, rides this track all the time. It's an eighth. Thrasher after the crash is ninth. And Dylan Schwartz of the Bar X, Chaparral Suzuki rounds out the top ten. So some new names up there that we don't normally see. Yeah, I think that's, that's the cool part about motocross. So much stuff done happen this first lap. You get these guys that's, you know, locals around here to be able to have a chance to get up there in top ten. So it's, it's cool. And here it is. Hampshire still has Moseman in sight, but he's not quite as close as he was the last lap. Jet's still right there. Yeah, what you're seeing with Jet right here, like he'll get close to him and then he'll drop back. Again, that's that's from making sure he can see all the lines around the track and not get too much roosted. Like Jet's pretty relaxed right now. Again, he has a good gap over fourth place and we'll see. He'll attack him, then back off and attack him again. But I do think once Jet decides to get around him, you'll see an all out aggression from him and he'll probably make the pass on both these guys. Meanwhile, that is Shimoda trying to get Ferris that young Spanish rider we're talking about. Little mistake by Ferris in those ruts. Shimoda not able to take advantage. Yeah, Joe, he's probably wondering, who is this guy yeah. over here? Uh, he's <laughs> like, this is me, Far East Coast Shimoda. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, so 109, I don't think most people have even heard of him until Wednesday when they announced he was filling in for Romano, who has a thumb injury. So get well soon to Mr. 411, as you call him. But Shimoda. Man, he had been nailing the stars the last few weeks, but mired right now, trying to get into fifth. Yeah, and that's the thing with this track. Like, Joe probably didn't get a bad start. Maybe your average Joe start, pretty much. Okay. Um, but the way this track separates, you just see the big old gap like he's lost. And I mean, for him, hopefully, maybe Michael or those guys has come back to him, but it's a lot of gap to be made up, and he's ha having a hard time trying to get around number 109 right now. Meanwhile, Moseman still leads Hampshire and Lawrence. No movement there. Hunter Lawrence has advanced. Last time we looked, he was in 18th. Now he is 14th. And Justin Cooper is 17th. Sent it down to uh, Jason Thomas with more. Guys, I was inquiring, how did they find this Guillaume Ferris? Where did he come from? And it was off a tip. Gareth Swanepoel spoke to a guy in Europe and said, hey, you need to really take a look at this kid. They brought him over the week before Unadilla. He's ridden the bike five times, and they said, hey, this is the real deal. Let's send him to Bud's Creek, and here you go, top five. It's unbelievable. Just what we needed, more really good riders under the Star Racing tent. They already had the biggest team out here, and they found another rider they picked up. And he is proving himself right now, fifth place. That's really what you say, pick him up off the street and come up here and get top five. <laughs> That's your commercial right there. Yeah. We'll take anybody and get up. But he's riding good. He's holding his own. I mean, top five in AMA National, that's saying a lot right there. And Shimoda still looking for a way around. Josh Fariz on the AEO KTM is seventh. And Stepik still hanging in there in eighth. No real changes uh, behind this group. So that's the thing. He's holding off Shimoda. But it's not like they've got a freight train behind them. He's not holding up the entire field. They've got a pretty good gap. No, and this is the guy who won the overall last weekend. Yeah. So for him, it's not like he's racing against anybody. He's racing against Joe. So I think you're seeing with this drone shot is the options of the lines and how this whole track pay, pays out. And you can see when guys catch him, they, they have to make a pass on him pretty quick. And I think be here. Joe's going to try to do it. He's got to grease this corner on the inside. He's going to put him outside for the next turn. Yeah, he should be able to go around the outside right here. Uh, Joe messed the corner up. Maybe stay down the inside. He's still got the opening, James, yep, and he's yep, got it. Go. Yeah, I was hoping he wouldn't go inside. He was cutting. That was a little attitude with that one right there. And now Ferris trying to come back. His series of rollers and this left-hander that'll lead us to the finish. All right, so he did eventually yield to Shimoda, but still an impressive ride. The rider racing in uh, AMA Motocross for the first time. Yeah, let's see if Joe can march his way forward now that he got around him. And it's going to be critical for Joe to the next couple of laps to, to put some heaters in to try to see if he can close this gap up. But it's a pretty big gap yeah. up to Bolin, I think. He's Seven just, seconds. Yeah. Oh, back to the leader, James. It's starting to tighten up again. Hampshire making another run. 
or maybe a mistake from Moseman, but it is on for the lead. Yeah, you can see Jet, but another couple seconds back. Oh, RJ almost lost it right there, so. Oh, that's the thing about Hampshire, he won't cheat you for effort. <laughs> he pushes to the absolute max all the time. But that yeah. cost him. Yeah, that's the thing with RJ. He kind of rides a little bit like Jason Anderson. They're really aggressive, and sometimes that's good, but a lot of these corners, you can't override them. Like I said, you got to pick the lines and pick your passes, and I think with RJ, the reason he's getting close is because he's calmed down in the slower parts, and he'll make his way up, and then he gets too aggressive trying to make that pass, and he'll just make a mistake. His problem is he's got to get around Michael without Jet getting around him, and you can tell every time Michael um, you know, does his thing, he's doing his his deal, and then uh, RJ comes up, trying to pass him, make a mistake, and he has Jet on him. So it's it's really a trickle effect of what's going on. So I think RJ obviously is quicker than Michael, but he's going to have to time his pass out. Otherwise, he's going to get passed by Jet. Yeah, Jet is right there. Honda HRC, man. Got about a one moto lead in the series standings, but his primary competitors, including uh, that's what I was about to talk about, Hunter Lawrence, is off the track, and he's got banners in his front wheel. Oh, man, he's hating them KTMs right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he, he's angry. Yeah, that's an angry tear-off pull. You know those guys. All, for all the riders out there, you know that tear-off pull right there. That's anger. <laughs> <laughs> Take him out of the tear-offs. Okay, so he had worked so hard to get into the points position, he had made it up to about 13th. But we'll see the next time they come through a uh, split of the transponder how many positions he lost. So that's what I was alluding to here. Jet, even in third, is getting a ton of the points back that he lost last week. Yeah, I'm interested to see what Jet, because the track still seems like a little loose and slippery, so I'd be critical. It's 15 minutes into it, like whether he's going to attack these guys and make the rest of the race easy. But we also know RJ is pretty strong, so I think if RJ is going to have a chance to win the moto, he's going to try to get around Michael right here and then try to pull away. He's still trying yeah, stabs at that inside, and this time it works. So he almost went down in that corner a lap ago, and how about this time? He takes over the lead exactly halfway in, 15 minutes down, 15 minutes to go. You can save 15 minutes with a 15 minute, a 15 percent with a 15 minute phone call to Geico, and now let's see how Jet responds. Does he try to immediately get around? Mosman, because look, Hampshire is getting away. Yeah, I think Jet can sense what I'm looking at is Michael's starting to realize he's been off for a little bit. Things are starting to happen. I believe what you're going to see is Jet's going to pass him pretty quickly. And then Michael, he's obviously sitting down and RJ's getting away, away from him. So for Jet's standpoint, RJ is probably the biggest threat to this moto, this moto win. So you'll see him probably get around Michael pretty quick within the next lap or so. So Mosman, again, we have not seen him in action since Spring Creek. Miss Washugal, Miss Unadilla, and we had a couple weeks off in between. So that's almost a yep. month without racing, and that's going to make all the difference. Jet sends it down the inside. It's going to be side by side over the top of this crest. Lawrence has the pass. Yeah, Michael tried to square him up, but not Jet oh, yeah. did a good job. Maybe Michael's coming bit. back here, James. Look at this. Yeah, Fighting this, back. The young kids, let's see what Jet does. And scrubbing it together, and Mosman yeah. gets it back and then goes down, and Jet nowhere to go. He's yeah. not happy about it. Yeah, he's not happy. He's not happy with that. That was just him fighting. you got to get a kid credit. He, he's a fighter. He did that at all in Supercross, but he's also feeling he's getting a little tired. You can tell by the way he was sitting down, but he wanted to fight Jet, and that's what happens when you get the big red number one plate. You are the guy. Uh, people fight you different. Well, you were talking about that this week when we were planning this show about Romano did not take any gruff last week from Jet. He didn't care who it was. He rode him aggressive, and maybe that led to some problems for Jet. First, we'll go through the uh, pass here. Yeah, he's, he scrubs right here, and this has been slippery all day, and he just starts losing the front end, and that soil is really hard on there. You can't really tell from the TV, but it's really slippery, and he just starts losing it. But I think his race, for him, he's going to go back to the truck. Man, I was there fighting. I would almost got this thing done if I wouldn't have fell. Um, but he, it's good to just see him fight. And it is like that. I think with Jet, he's in the luxury of having his brother in second, his good friend Joe Shimoda in third in the points. These are the guys like Michael Bozeman, Justin Cooper, RJ Hamtire. Those are the guys that you're going to see him race very aggressive. So I mean, it's not it's not unexpected to see Michael do that. I don't think his brother or Joe would have done that. but. You know, Jet's like, whatever. He just fell. <laughs> well, your theory was uh, Romano really challenged him last week and attacked. And maybe we'd see more riders do that. Moseman went for it, got the short end. And that leaves RJ Hampshire in the lead of the Rockstar Husqvarna looking for his first moto win of the year.
The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Motosport.com. Make your next ride your best ride. And by Monster Energy. Unleash the beast. And that's what we call the Monster Rig Ride. They got Joe Shimoda and a bunch of the Monster Energy riders over there slinging t-shirts for the fans. But Joe is getting to business on the track. He has caught Max Boland for fourth. And by the way, Boland very quietly putting together a pretty solid run the last few weeks. Yeah, Max has actually been coming into his own. And unlike some of the younger uh, kids, Max always looks pretty in control. His, his style is pretty smooth. Probably sets up um, the well with the KTM. But he looks solid, and you can tell he's just building every week, and his body's starting to fill out, and he's starting to learn these things. So don't don't roll over. Max ain't a, he ain't a rollover, and he's going to fight Joe the whole way. And one of the cool facts, we uh, were doing the research for this race. Max's dad, he is a second-generation rider, Talon, won this Bud's Creek race back in 1999. That's his lone AMA national win for Max's dad right at this racetrack. Max been knocking on the door, top fives and podiums all year right now running in fourth. Now Shimoda's caught him from a decent gap behind. We'll see if Max can fight him off. So we're into the final third of this. There it is, June 20th, 1999. Max's dad, Talon. Yeah, now like father like son, he's trying to keep it. Yep. Yeah, Max is actually doing a really good job at keeping his momentum up. And what you're seeing, he's not cutting out of the corners too much. He's kind of staying into the berm. And what that is allowing him to do is keep up the traction. And that's why you see Joe caught him, but he's going to have a hard time trying to make the pass if um, Max doesn't make a mistake. And a great rebuild for Volan. Had a really rough Supercross campaign, was even missing main events at times. But he has been rock solid in outdoor motocross this summer and taking strides, although there, Shimoda gets right behind him as he's dealing with the traffic. Yeah, that was good. Max get around both these lappers and maybe hold Joe up, but Joe's actually getting around them too. So they're both catching uh, Michael right now. So I, if I'm Joe, I think the best he's going to end up is, is hopefully third. And there he goes. Oh, he might have it right here using that outside line and jumping over Volan's head. He went far east to get him. He got okay. him. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Joe's on the move right now. I think he'll close down on Michael. Michael should start feeling his fatigue a little bit if he's been off for a while and those guys are closing, but overall it's still a good race so far. Okay, so here is Shimoda, fourth. You mentioned that Mosman's not too far ahead, about two seconds, so you should probably see that red number 29. Yep, there he is. Yeah. So Shimoda's got a shot at third. Yeah, Joe's he's kicking in a form. You can tell the track's starting to get really good. Probably the best is going to be all day. It's only going to get rougher from here. Michael's starting to fill it, and overall, it's it's a good ride for him, and especially with him battling with Jet, that's where he's hanging his hat on. He's like, I was with Champ, so I think Joe will probably close in and get around here pretty quickly. So we heard there's actually a section where maybe one of the sprinklers or a hose leaked, and there's some water at the base of one of these hills. We'll see when we get there if it causes any problems as you watch Moseman and Shimoda battle for third. Lawrence has taken a 7.1 second gap to Hampshire. Well, he had it down to 5.9. Now it's 6.2. Yeah, even the track's hot. Just watering his own self out there. So. <laughs> yeah, kind of jealous. Yeah, Michael actually looks like this last half a lap. He's calmed down a little bit. Maybe he can hold on to it. And there's only a couple parts of this track where you really have to hold your line. I think in this section up here, you can actually relax. The guy really can't get around you. So we'll see what happens. You'll probably see Joe catch up to him around these off cameras, and then Michael pick it up again. Well, you kind of messed that corner up a little bit. Oh, and then held behind the lapper. So now Shimoda right behind him. You see Volan lurking in fifth. Nowhere for Moseman to go. And then I think it's at the base of this hill. You might see some of the water. Yeah, look at that trail on the left side. Yeah, well, that kind of works out. It cuts off the inside, so it makes it more one-lined. <laughs> but what you saw with Michael back there, you wouldn't believe how much time and effort it is like just getting caught up behind that lapper how much energy he just saved right there um, being caught up and just being able to sit down but actually pulled away from joe joe must have made him a little mistake right here wait so you're saying being held up he actually had to save energy for a second well yeah that particular <laughs> section like he's he's stuck he knows joe can't get around him it's a one line and part so the lapper's in front you can't move forward and you saw when michael was sitting down and so he was just saving some energy, wow. maybe for the fight. Yeah, it's all little tricks and trades, us, <laughs> us riders out there. We're always trying to save some energy somehow. 
thank the lap rider. I can't go any faster. I might as well just save some energy. Or, or maybe that was just my excuse. That's what I was saying. The lap was in the way. I mean, what do you want me to do? Hey, hey you're retired now. You tell us all the secrets. Most of it will be like, no, nah, fitness is not a problem. Yeah, right. yeah, I'm good. Yeah, that's what I'm here for. I'll tell you the truth. Nah, that boy tired. <laughs> he's tired. All right. All right. Hey, he's got a reason. He hasn't raced in about a month, and he's trying to hold on for a podium. There's more lap traffic. This time he's got to work to get around them. No oh, rest break there. That's going to work out for him. Like he's got in between those lappers and we're coming back to another one line section. So you see how he's taking his time right here. Like he's being smooth. You can't rush that section. But again, like those are the parts as a rider, you can relax on there. And you relax there when you know, you know the guy can't pass you to attack him somewhere else like he did with Jet. It's been quite an adventure for both Justin Cooper and Hunter Lawrence. Cooper's on the right side of your screen in this Thor battle box. He is 10th. McAdoo is the Kawasaki in front of him in 9th. And I believe Hunter Lawrence, after an early crash and an off-track excursion, would be next. He is 11th. So let's see if McAdoo can hold off Cooper in the latter stages. Yeah, if I'm Justin, I'll make sure Hunter doesn't catch me. We've seen the boy got a little angry. We saw how he pulled those tear off, so you don't <laughs> want him around. But that's a pretty good ride for Hunter to get back up, closer to the top 10 after having two crashes like that. I know Justin's probably pretty bummed, like being announced for the Team USA to go down the first lap with Jalik, and he's fighting his way back up. But as I said, like this, this track's about to start. You can lose a lot of time. We're seeing it right now. Well, plus, you know Cooper wants to get a win before the year is over. He had the speed, really, the last two races to do it. And then here he ends up with another problem early in the race. Winning the overall today is going to be next to impossible. Yeah, for sure. For him, he's getting frustrated because he's won the second moto the last Hunter. two weekends, and now you're yep. starting to see it's the first moto that he's kind of throwing her away. And I, I think, again, it's a good thing. The guy's trying to be aggressive. Like, that means he's feeling well. But, you know, that position, Jalik, there's certain guys you get on. And he, oh! The Laffers, he's just trying to get out of the way. He doesn't know what's going on. And, yeah, that's unfortunate. That's just racing. All right, Moseman under fire again from Shimoda. Looking for an opening in those, on those rollers. Can't get there. Yeah, I think Michael's going to... If Joe can't get him before it is, Michael will hold him off. And we're going to funnel back into a one-line section again. And Michael's going to sit down, hold him off again. But maybe Joe can make this outside work. I saw him going there with the lappers. That ain't working that well. No, yeah, he lost a ton of ground the previous lap. This time without the lappers, he's at least able to get back to him, but not nearly close enough to make a pass. So a couple things are happening at once. Hunter was closing on Lawrence, or sorry, Hunter Lawrence was closing on Cooper for that 10th place spot, just as Cooper was closing on McAdoo. What you and there's that battle again. That's Cooper and Lawrence. Oh, boy. Yeah, Cooper better watch out. Hunter's hot. Yep. Take that tear off rage out on him. Yeah, and I think with Hunter, like, there's certain guys that they want to win. Like, you have guys, they're friends, they're all friends with Joe. But Cooper's kind of the outlier, you know, so I think Hunter's probably going to be pretty aggressive and try to get around Justin because Justin's been the guy last couple of weeks winning the second moto. So Hunter, he'll probably get around him pretty quickly. Yeah, we've had like a boys club of the Lawrence brothers and Shimoda on the podium hanging out, having fun every week. Cooper wants to be the guy to bust that up here in the latter stages of the championship. There's Moseman. Still holding off Shimoda. Time is running out here. Yeah, yeah. RJ's got almost an eight-second lead. And you got to give it up to Michael, man. Like, he's figuring out where to race this part of the track. It's, it's some good parts. And with him, if he can keep these lappers in between him and Joe and hold Joe off on certain parts, then he might have a chance. Oh, he he's got an opening here. Yeah, I think we, here we go. Maybe a Joe will slam on the brakes and try to cut it inside. On the outside to inside. No, Black Rider had no shot at that. Going to be probably three to go here. Do the rollers. Let's see. You can make up a lot of time right in these rollers, as you can see. But the lappers oh. are holding Joe up right now. And Moseman gets another break with the lap traffic. Now, as you're watching this, you're seeing them. They get close, and then they start backing out. That's, again, where... Certain lines on the track and, and certain positions, you got to be able to attack a guy and get around him when you catch him. Otherwise, you're just eating all that chocolate cake. <laughs> <laughs> and that doesn't taste as good as it sounds. It doesn't taste that good. No, Shimoda is right back to him. It's a great battle for third. And yeah, RJ Hampshire, by the way, he's checked out. Jet Lawrence not able to get him. It's almost nine seconds. Hampshire looking for his first win of the year. Yep. Now, I think if Joe can close up on Michael, he might be able to make a uh, pass around the 
these off cameras. At least if he can keep them close, then when you start going up towards Henry Hill, he might be able to make a pass right there because I think the pass for him is probably going to happen right around the mechanics area. Oh, oh Joe! Come on, Joe. Not your habits no more. Come on. <laughs> Almost came off the motorcycle in that corner. That's the area where Hampshire took the lead from Moseman earlier. Oh, it's so frustrating as a rider, too. Like, you did all that work. And you could tell Joe was starting to try to set him up. He wanted to get close to him so he could make that pass for the mechanics there. So uh, he's making a few mistakes right now. Shimoda's right. Uh, have two and a half laps to get back to him. He's been able to get right to him, but yeah, not to the right spots. That's the thing. Like, he'll be able to close on him. It's yeah. just about where he makes that pass at. And I think there's a couple parts. So here's Hunter and Cooper. They're going at it. Uh, Hunter got held up by a – that is actually Varese. That is actually a rider on the lead lap. Varese has been up there the wow. entire time. The privateer, AEO Power Sports. So Cooper snuck by Varese. Varese is one of the orange hand guards. Wow. There goes Cooper right by him. Or, sorry, Hunter right by him. Cooper's wow. already gotten by. And that's uh, McAdoo in that group, too. Yeah, man. McAdoo yeah. came up short. Yeah, you see Justin give a little look back to figure out who was it. It's still a pretty good ride for Hunter. Actually, a, a great ride. He's going to be frustrated because of two crashes. But overall, it's not a bad ride for him to come back up. So Cooper is eighth. McAdoo ninth. Hunter is tenth. They've dropped Verizo. And the lap rider goes down right in front of Cooper. And, well, Cooper got through all that while dealing with the pressure from Hunter Lawrence. Yeah, Hunter was still able to get through it uh, pretty well, too. So this race ain't over. Oh, yeah, he's right back to him to be a knockdown drag out. But it is for eighth place because they both went down on the first lap in separate incidents. Yeah, you can see how much time Hunter makes in those little roller sections. Those are parts you can make a lot of time when the guy's kind of resting up and I think Hunter's going to try to get him right here. He's already frustrated with him. Nice outside line. And then it funnels together again. Yeah, let's see if he goes around the outside or square him up right here. There it is. Yep. Inside. You called it. There he goes. Hunter Lawrence makes the move. That's what Hunter did good. If you saw how quickly he caught Justin, then he gets caught up behind him. When you when you catch a guy here, you got to make moves. And, and that boy's on fire right now. Oh. It, Better watch out, Laffer. <laughs> Hunter almost overstepped that corner and went down. Cooper's going to try to hang with him. It's about as far as they can go. They have almost 10 seconds to make up on Nate Thrasher, who is seventh. Looks like Joe got around Michael, finally. Yeah, while we're watching this battle, so that was a hard-earned podium for Shimoda. White flag's about to come out. And what can you say about Guillaume Ferris in sixth? The young Spaniard, completely off the radar, is putting himself on it right now, running in sixth in his debut, filling in for Nick Romano on the Monster Yamaha Star Racing ride. Yeah, found him off the street and up there top five. I mean, top six. <laughs> Kid looks good. There's that battle for third. So Shimoda got around Mosman, as you saw. And now, last lap. Moseman's not giving up, James. Yeah, I was about to say, watch this. Now, Michael knows there's only one lap left, half a lap. It wouldn't surprise me if he gets around Joe again right here because oh, okay. that energy, you always find it again when it's like, okay, this lap's over. I might be able to get a podium. It would be a big deal to have Michael get that. So I believe if, if you're going to get around Joe, it might be an aggressive pass, but there it is. Look at it. Oh, side by side. Oh. Almost touch wheels. Oh, he's going to hold him. He's going to hold on. Wow. Moseman yep. gets him back. Now Joe's going to try to return the favor. Joe's like, what are you doing? I thought this was done. I thought you just happened to be back, but... <laughs> That's what I like about Michael. He's a fighter. He's, he's fought that way in Supercross. Some people think it's aggressive, but to me, all that set up, Michael's riding style and how he is, look at Joe. Oh, wow. That ain't Laid average. That ain't no. average. Laid it down in that berm and just went around the outside to reclaim the spot. Those guys battled for about 15 minutes and couldn't figure out a way to pass, and then they passed each other twice in one lap. Hey, they're angry. <laughs> Joe mad because he passed them back. Michael mad like, well, I'm only got one lap. And you got RJ out here just cruising. The paddle tire on there. Amazing what a star to do for you. By my calculations, this is the first moto win for Hampshire since the third moto of 2020 at Loretta Lynn's in the mud. Was wow. Won some overalls last year, but was doing it with 2-2 two, two scores. Wow. 
It's man. been over two years. That's awesome, man. Good ride, RJ. Good ride. Ah, he's a Florida guy. You got to be proud of him. Yeah, I'm always happy. He All looked right. good, too. So He good. did. And uh, Jet Lawrence got the second and couldn't close in. RJ Hampshire takes his first moto win of 2022 on the Rockstar Husqvarna. He's get a half neck burn. Okay. Is that what one moto does? He get you a half neck all burn. All right. I like it. Jed Lawrence going to take second. That battle for third going all the way down to the wire. It looks like Bozeman has finally relinquished it. And Shimoda's going to hold him to the line. There's the green machine, the Monster Pro Circuit Kawasaki taking third. Shimoda. And he worked hard for that one. Yeah. Now what that does. What that does, it actually puts Joe in a good position. All he has to do is beat Jet this next motor. If he wins it, then it'll be his. Jet go 2-2, two, two, Mike. So we'll see. But RJ's the man of the day right now. Yep, halfway through, and he has his first motor win of the year. We'll talk to RJ Hampshire about that win when we return. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. With a nationwide network of parts and care, Napa helps you get up and go. Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. And by Lucas Oil, keep that engine alive. Back here live on MAV TV, we have completed the first moto of the day, and RJ Hampshire came out on top for the first time this season. We're working really hard to get that Rockstar Husqvarna up there, and it paid off. We'll give it to you with the Lucas Oil race recap. Hampshire is a lead early, but Michael Mosman wants it, James. Yeah, he made an aggressive pass on him. I think RJ was sleeping a little bit, and you get to, got a little heater out there. I think yeah. this is when everybody was getting cut off, and these boys are a little angry in the beginning part. A lot of stuff happening. Yeah, Justin Cooper tangling with Jalik Swole, and then Cooper goes down. That'll put him and Swole way in the back. And then big problems for Hunter Lawrence. Yeah, that sucks. He's, he's caught up in those. And luckily for him, he was able to ride out of it. But yeah, that could have been worse. And it's just more frustrating for him. We finish eighth. OK, here's Hampshire, a rematch with Moseman. Squares him up, cut him off right here to get in. And I think at that part, Michael was like, all right, you can have it. RJ was coming, so. And then I thought he was going to give it to Lawrence, but no. Fights back and then crashes. Yeah, you got to give Michael credit. He fought everyone. It wasn't just Jet. He fought Joe, and uh, Joe was able to get him at the end. But you got to get a guy credit, and here he is with Joe. Same thing. This is late. He had actually passed Shimoda back, and then, oh, that's beautiful by Shimoda. Yeah, you got to give a guy credit. When he gets it, hey, you can have it. Yep, just greases that outside, and that'll put Shimoda up into third. Even when Lawrence got in the second, he could not close on Hampshire. Gets a whole shot, gets a moto win. Sometimes it's that simple. It's simple, right? Yeah. Well, let's find out more and send it to Jason Thomas. RJ Hampshire, you kind of see this building over the last few weeks, getting a little bit better. I know you guys have been working on the bike, but this is also a track where you've done very well at in the past. How'd it feel to get that win in the first moto of the year? Yeah, that was huge. Uh, we took a gamble right off the bat from the start, uh, changed the tire up there, and I was the only guy on the line, I think, running it. So uh, paid off, finally got a good start. Um, Kind of had to stay calm there a bit whenever uh, Mosey was going at it with me. Uh, but, man, just felt good. Huge thanks to this whole Rockstar Energy Husqvarna factory racing team. Uh, man, I'm, I'm not quiet about things, but uh, they want to win just as bad as me. So it, it goes out and shows, and uh, that's huge. I got them a win. Um, but also thanks to Fly, uh, Scott, uh, Keens Buildings, Paradise Auto, um, and, man, just everyone that sports this team. And, uh, hey, we're at least back to having some comfort. So uh, we'll see how it goes. We had using that scoop tire, got him off to the start. Yep, James, you saw that. Yeah, I, th I thought they might try that, and again, the setup. Sometimes with RJ, and what you saw in the beginning part of the race, what he was saying that he had to calm down a little bit. Well, with that scoop tire, it allows you to get off the gate, which he got a great start, but when he starts trying to cut back, it makes it a little difficult, and that's why he's sliding out, so. Here's that start, scoop tire and all. You see the Husqvarna shoot to the inside. Yeah, I mean, it was a good jump. And I think with RJ, he knew probably the best chance for him would be having a hole shot, and he was able to fight in there. Still had the Yamaha guys up there, but, man, RJ was a man today. He got it done. Yep, motosport.com, hole shot to Hampshire. Again, he had the battle with Moseman, had some pressure from Jet Lawrence. was able to survive that and get the win. So, but as, for as bad as it was for Jet Lawrence last week, his uh, primary competitors in the championship had their own rough motos. Somehow, Hunter Lawrence got eighth. I don't know how he was able to pull that off after being almost last early. Then the off-track excursion. It was two things he had to deal with. And shout out to Guillaume Ferris, the rider from Spain, finishing sixth in his debut here in the U.S. There is your top 20. Send it back to JT. 
Jet Lawrence, a little bit of a calmer race, although you did get into it with Michael Mosman right over here. Had to feel a little bit better than Unadilla, get solid points, and uh, yeah, 2-1 can get, still get it done on the day. Yeah, everyone, I have a bad weekend. Everyone jumps on me, says I'm finished, basically. But, I mean, it was one bump in the road. I'm back. I'm just, just cruising, you know, not uh, doing anything stupid. And, uh, yeah, it was like for flooding lap, I swear it was some type of hurricane out there because they flooded the track. It was like ice, so uh, I had to be really careful with that and not make any, any uh, silly mistakes. So, uh, no, going to go into the second motor, hopefully a better start than that one. wasn't too happy with that. It was good enough, but hopefully I get a better one and just uh, go from there. Weege, uh, I don't know who would say the Jet Lawrence is finished after last weekend, but that would be a big mistake. Uh, yeah, I want I want names and addresses of whoever was thinking that he wouldn't come back strong this weekend. Yeah, he's probably just making that up for him all himself to motivate. Say, yeah, motivate. We, we're funny. You can win all these races and be like, oh, I'm finished. I'm finished. Everybody's saying that, but whatever it takes, Jet. A, a little a pouring haterade on himself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our next race is going to be next Saturday. Ironman National will have fast lap qualifying right here on Mav TV and also Mav TV on Flow Racing at 10 a.m. Eastern and then four straight hours of motos starting at 1 o'clock. And don't forget, every Tuesday evening at 6.30 p.m., it's inside Pro Motocross again on Mav TV. So uh, we are not quite done here with the 250 class moto number one. Joe Shimoda, a hard earned third, will send it back down to JT. Joe Shimoda becoming a podium mainstay this season. That one didn't come easy. I think you were in a battle for 35 minutes there. Oh, for sure. I uh, just had a really bad start. Um, yeah, and in the first few laps, there's a lot of guys went down in the corner, so I couldn't charge as much. And uh, yeah, I had it to come back. Um, pretty much sprint the whole 30 minutes. So uh, let's make it a little bit easier next one. <laughs> Weege, I don't care how he's got to get it, he is getting it done each time. Having to come through this entire field to get to third is a pretty big statement. Yeah, the question is going to be how much energy does he have left for Moto2 because he rode really hard, especially in comparison to the riders out front. But that is just a 250 class. The talk of the industry right now, the one-point gap, the epic battle between Chase Sexton and Eli Tomac for the 450 class of Lucas Oil for Motocross. And we're just minutes away from their first moto of the day. You got to be pumped on this one. Oh, I'm excited. Honey, put away the kids. It's about to be an adult town. These boys about to get business. Yep. Prime time, Sexton and Tomac here from Bud's Creek. Their first moto, moto of the day. We'll have it for you live on Mav TV. Our first moto, though, of the 250s is complete. Oh, yeah, by the way, Tony Caroli there on the 222 going to be back in action today. Have not had him since High Point, the nine-time world champ out of Italy, and he was second fastest in qualifying. So lots to look forward to in 450 Moto 1. Don't go anywhere. Keep watching here on Mav TV. As for our 250 Moto, it is a wrap. RJ Hampshire led early and led late to get it done. That's just one of our four motos today. For James Stewart and Jason Thomas of Jason Wygant saying, stay with us. 250s are going to take a break. 450s are about to go racing. Don't go anywhere.